Recently, NBC Dateline had a story about two average American teenagers who murdered and cut up a friend, put the body parts in a garbage bag, and hid it in a drain sewer. The announcer, the parents, and the audience shook their heads and asked, how could they do this? I was dumbfounded too. After watching a 10-hour 4DVD presentation on the satanic agenda infusing much youth music, I have the answer. Incredible and bizarre as it sounds, the younger generation is being inducted into Satanism. It is being taught to murder, rape and hate society in general, and especially Christians and Christianity. By the way, you can find the DVD by clicking the link in the description box below. Entitled They Sold Their Soul for Rock and Roll, the DVD makes a convincing case that espousing Satanism is the price of success in the music industry. Starting with the roots of rock and roll, down to heavy metal, goth, grunge, and rap, this documentary shows that many famous musicians actually see themselves as evangelists for Satan and say they derive their power from him. They have literally sold their souls to the devil, and their primary goal is to make us do the same. The MTV network is the handmaiden of this agenda. Produced by Fight the Good Fight Ministry, the DVD analyzes the lyrics, interviews and album art of more than 60 superstars. The consistent espousal of Satanists Aleister Crowley, Anton Levy, or Howard Levy, and Madame Blavatsky, and their inclusion in the album art, along with familiar satanic imagery, is part of a deliberate lead agenda. The list of artists exposed includes The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, Michael Jackson, Madonna, Led Zeppelin, Kurt Cobain, Marilyn Manson and Eminem. You can see excerpts online. I recommend you watch Cobain, Manson and Eminem. This excerpt from Demons, by Rigor Mortis, is typical of heavy metal. We come bursting through your bodies, rape your helpless soul, transform you into a creature, merciless and cold, we force you to kill your brother, eat his blood and brain, shredding flesh and sucking bone, till everyone's insane, we are pestilent and contaminate, the world demonic legions prevail. From Satanic Roots of Rock and Roll by Jack Thau. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The DVD explains how music is the most effective means of brainwashing and mind control, especially if the audience thinks it's listening to spontaneous creative expression. The DVD traces the satanic message, do as thou wilt, formerly do your own thing, in many songs advocating free sex, drugs, violence, murder and mayhem. You are God. You can do anything you want. There is no inherent moral order based on universal love and justice. The rock concert scenes are chillingly reminiscent of the Nazi Nuremberg rally. The unabashed espousal of evil raises the question. Why are the world's biggest corporations purveying this poison? Why is tainted spinach intercepted, yet this toxic filth is actually pumped into the minds and souls of millions of unsuspecting children? The Illuminati's central banking cartel controls these corporations. Its aim is revolution, in other words, communism, banker world dictatorship and the destruction of Western civilization, that is, based on the four pillars of religion, nation, family and race. They need to translate their control of our government's credit, ability to print money, into total control, using their cultural and political puppets. This is why opposition to socially destructive elements, for example, purveying homosexuality to straits, often is not tolerated, but vicious hatred against Christians and society in general is not only acceptable, but actually bankrolled. A member of the Illuminati explained, Christianity is our only real enemy, since all the political and economic phenomena of the bourgeois states are only its consequences. The DVD reveals that the Columbine shooters knew the lyrics of Satanist bands by heart and literally were acting out these instructions. They deliberately targeted Christian students, but the term hate crime apparently doesn't apply to Christian victims. Cassie Bernal was asked to reject God to spare her life. She refused. She is a saint, but there is little mention of her in the Illuminati media. How could this happen? Tom Brokaw intoned. With one hand, the mass media pretends to be shocked, and with the other hand it teaches children to kill. Similarly, media and government pretend to stamp out child predators, while at the same time promoting rock groups that encourage children to have sex. The DVD shows a Spice Girl serenading a six-year-old with a song advocating self-abandonment. It shows 14-year-old teenage girls who look like hookers, admitting that group sex orgies are commonplace. Reaction to this DVD often is shock and denial. There is a tendency to dismiss it as the overzealous work of Christian fundamentalists. 
Indeed, the makers are too quick to reject Eastern religions as satanic, and they fail to see how some performers like Elvis Presley might have been honest dupes with good intentions. If you're not a Christian, I urge you to overlook the sermonizing, although I personally think it is pertinent. The overall message cannot be denied and should not be ignored. The Illuminati started off innocently in the 50s and 60s, urging the young to defy authority and indulge their libido. Little did we suspect that Sgt. Pepper referred to the Satanist and MI6 agent Aleister Crowley, and that the Beatles label EMI stands for Electrical and Mechanical Instruments, one of Britain's largest war contractors. Little did we know the music industry is controlled by corporations using the mob, and many performers are brainwashed and drugged and live in fear. Little did we suspect that their rebellious message advanced the Illuminati's divide and rule strategy or that their prescriptions for living would make us dysfunctional and ruin our lives. To a large extent, our lives are shaped by Illuminati-controlled popular culture and history. We are fed our ideas and beliefs instead of using common sense and first-hand experience. We are the product of someone else's lab experiment. The someone else is a disciple of Satan who has hijacked humanity. An argument can be made for some aspects of the sexual liberation in New Age movements, but the bottom line is they were designed to delude and undermine Christianity and serve as an intermediary step to a clockwork orange society, Grand Theft Auto meets Brave New World. No wonder, we see so many young people wandering around, looking like zombies. What is the pernicious message constantly whispered in their ear? Is the Illuminati breeding terrorists in our midst, but real ones this time? Society cannot eschew God and pretend to be neutral and secular. God is synonymous with universal spiritual ideals. Truth, love and justice. You cannot turn off the light without being shrouded by darkness. Don't be fooled. People who remove the Ten Commandments from public life are merely making room for golden calves and sacrificial altars. The open conspiracy is a cancer at the heart of Western society, and it is reaching a critical stage. Do we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear? The source of this cancer's power is the private central banking cartel. Do we have the courage to tackle it? Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.